ladies and gentlemen, last year's stand-up comic audience award winner, Ellen DeGeneres. Actually, the reason I am here tonight is to explain the voting process of uh, the way this year's funniest stand-ups were chosen as opposed to the way last year's funniest stand-ups were chosen. So I'm going to um, get to that in a second. I just want to say one thing real quick. I um, Winning last year the funniest uh, female stand-up, I'm not el eligible to win this year. So I have a little problem with this term limitation thing because I feel like I was just as funny, if not funnier, than I was last year. So next year, um, I'm hoping to be in the acting category because I just got a new series on ABC that'll be on in the fall. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's on ABC in the fall. It's called Laurie Hill. I'll be on it. ABC. Fall. And... Um, I think this is a great opportunity, you know, to talk about me just for a second. I feel like... It's a great show. I'm very happy about it, but you never know about shows, if they'll last or not. So I have some ideas if anybody out here, Penny, Gary, would like to help me in my career. You know, most shows are like kind of rehashed older shows anyway. They just do a little twist on an older show. And I have an idea for my show. You know, The Flying Nun was very, very popular. That's far-fetched. I know that. But I would be fairly religious and I could jump really high. <laughs> The Leaping Unitarian is what I'm thinking of calling it. I don't really know. I just want to be on a classy show. That's Or I'll work with puppets. I don't care. I just want to be on a show. So in a minute, the, uh, the funniest comedians will be uh, announced for this year. But um, you're probably saying to yourselves, gee, I wish Ellen would explain how the voting was done this year. Okay. We showed uh, clips of the ten nominees on a special edition of Short Attention Span Theater, which is on Comedy Central, a network... Thank you. Comedy Central, it's an all-comedy network, all-comedy all the time. And um, from that, thousands of viewers wrote and phoned in a special 900 number and talked to naked operators named Betty. <laughs> I'm kidding. They weren't named Betty at all. They, I'm kidding. They were. Um, everyone who voted had the chance to win um, a brand-new Dodge Shadow convertible, which, by the way, is another good idea. I think we have a big election year coming up right now. I think a lot of people would vote if you had a chance to win maybe a washer-dryer or something like that, something you should think of. All the, uh, all the ballots on the, the entire awards, not just this category, were um, counted by uh, some friends of mine, actually. They're from Price Waterhouse, uh, Joseph Page and Richard Norton. We actually have a band together. They're very good dancers. We play frat parties on the weekends. Um, so now to uh, introduce this year's funniest stand-ups is a woman who uh, started working in Greenwich Village uh, when female stand-ups were almost unheard of. Uh, she's since then gone on to play every major club in the country. She's raised a daughter. She's written a couple of bestsellers. She's uh, hosted her own show. She just finished her autobiography. Every woman that goes into comedy today walks through the doors that were opened by, and I would like to personally thank Miss Joan Rivers. fly in from New York on my own expense. Uh, <laughs> just talk, it's true. To talk about uh, what it's like to be a stand-up comic. And I was very pleased. And then I found out I was their second choice. They had originally asked Dan Quayle. But um, being a stand-up is very, very difficult. I'm, I'm in the business 22 years and already I'm shaking. You know what I mean? There are nights that Everything works. You come out, and for some reason, they like you, and you like them, and it's a party. And you walk off, and you say, why are they paying me? And there are some nights that no matter what you do, nothing works. Nothing works. You, you kill yourself out there. The same joke that you just did last night, they love, they all go, yeah, right. And um, I mean, I once had a monk break a 20-year vow of silence to go, you know, up in front. And um, people have asked me, why do people continue to do stand-up comedy? I always say that by doing stand-up, and this is really true, um, you're able to point out the endearing foibles of human nature to everybody. You're able to make the world a happier place through comedy. And mainly, I hope you'll be spotted for a TV show and you get out of the business once and for all. <laughs> and I'm here 
for the ladies that are still plugging away in the clubs in the category of funniest female stand-up comic. The nominees are Diane Ford. My grandma was too poor to afford cologne. She used to put a little bit of vanilla behind each ear. Every time she'd bake cookies, my grandpa would get an erection. Diana Jordan. This is going to be my first time to get married, and I know I'm no spring chicken, but hey, I am still going to wear that white dress. Right, ladies? I might be wearing black panties, but I'm wearing that white dress. Kathy Ladman. Typical Jewish mother. Really, one time my mother was on jury duty. They sent her home. She insisted she was guilty. Kathleen Madigan. Went to the little counter and they go, oh, you're 24. Well, you're just not old enough to rent a car. I was like, well, I'm just old enough to buy an assault rifle. <laughs> Pam Stone. Whenever a woman reaches up and kisses a man, we raise our leg. You ever notice that? That leg just pops up. Isn't that the stupidest thing? You never see a guy do this, do you? No. You never see a guy go to work. Bob, how you doing? And the winner is Kathy Ladman. so much. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, uh, I'm so glad I waxed my underarms tonight. <laughs> I have so many people that I really want to thank, and I know there's not time to thank everyone, but I'm just going to go through it really quickly. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Mike Nichols and Elaine May for making the album Examining, exa Examine Doctors. Uh, because that was that first inspired me to become a comedian when I was eight years old, and I, and I haven't given up. Um, I'd like to thank my fabulous manager and one of my dearest friends, Claudia Crown, who speaks to me about the most inane things that no one else would ever talk to me about. My best friend of 16 years in counting, Kathy Kinsner. My sister and brother-in-law, Larry Popkin. Leslie Larry Popkin for coming out tonight. A man who will not allow me to mention his name who's sitting at my table. Judy Tull, Richard Addis, John Melikar, and these are all the other people that I listed. So what I'm going to do when I go home is I'm going to put these up on the wall so when I get depressed, which never really happens to me, I can look at this and think, I love all these people and, and they love me. And thank you. And I love you all for making me laugh. Thank you very much. Enjoy the